hunting Africa's deadly big five fills the entire bucket list for many hunters, as each species is uniquely capable of turning the tables, transforming the hunter into the hunted, and often, the dead. Some of the, uh, I mean, the, but the big five animals, I mean, the charges are different, or can be different, and they are different. Uh, elephants sometimes will just come on and they're not gonna stop. Uh, particularly the females can be really bad if they think their offspring is in trouble. Uh, the bulls will also do charges, but sometimes they'll do the mock charges coming very close to you, maybe only a few yards away, maybe 15 yards. But if you have, a, for example, a wounded Cape buffalo, the difference there is if he comes for you, he's coming for you. They're, the only way you can stop him is kill him. He's not going to mock charge. He's going to come for you. Between its massive shoulder plates, overlapping ribs, and inch-thick hide, the Cape Buffalo is built to defend against any attack. So selecting the right ammunition can be the razor-thin margin between killing and being killed. Each bullet produces 5,000 pounds of foot energy. It's really unbelievable how much power those Cape Buffalo have. Okay, good hit. He's hit hard. Just watch him, he's going left. For people that might want to hunt Cape Buffalo and maybe haven't, they have a personality that is uh, tough, they have a lot of stamina. So just because someone shoots one doesn't mean they're go gonna go down immediately. You can shoot them, you can hit them in the right spots, but once they decide that they want to go for you and come for you, you really have to kill them. You either have to take out their spine or take out their, their motor skills and their brain. Hunters Bill Pipes and Steve LeBlanc have come to South Africa with Cape Buffalo on their minds. Uh, I've been 15 times and uh, it's not enough. You just, if you love to hunt, love the outdoors, and love the camaraderie with your buddies, and uh, it just can't be beat. Bill has been retired and he decided that he wanted to make one more trip to Africa for some different stuff. So far, that's one other beast. I think all he has is a little spread. Bill, 74 years of age, hunted Africa 15, 16 times, but really wanted to get that trophy buffalo. One of the wonderful opportunities is that the bulls in this area, the genetics are some of the best in Africa. They produce trophy bulls. So Bill was very selective on this thing, but it was a very a big shock for Bill because he was looking for something in the 44, 45, 46. He's seen pictures of the bulls that Brad had shot earlier on in May in the first trip. And that's what he was kind of holding out for. Yeah, nice, but not big enough. No. When we were out on, on our hunt here, uh, Steve had already taken a real nice trophy uh, old bull, and so had Brad. They only allow you to take bulls that are at least 12 years old. So hunting for these trophy bulls is difficult because a lot of them get their horns broken or Many times, maybe an African lion uh, will kill him. So it's a difficult hunt. Find something a little bigger. <laughs> Hunts for Africa's Big Five result in much more than precious meat for villagers and stunning trophies for the hunters. Extensive travel and hospitality costs fuel local economies while steep fees and licenses provide precious funding for anti-poaching efforts and environmental protection initiatives. One of the things that a lot of people don't understand, uh, these hunts in Africa are expensive, but this monies that they take in goes back into game management. It sort of protects the area from the standpoint of poachers moving in, because when you have professional hunters and people in the field out there, watching over the game and it's very strictly controlled and of course all the the meat is taken and eaten uh, by the people there as well as the money's being used for game management. Despite these extensive measures the vile trappings of poachers abound on Africa's game reserves. This is just a bunch of snares that the patrols have found going around in this reserve. And this is just what they've been able to find. 
this here, they spent a lot of time making this. This is an old pop bottle, uh, you know, a, a two liter bottle. And what they've done is they've made it so that what it is is a fish trap. The money that's used from sportsmen around the world goes into these villages off of the trophy hunting to stop this kind of stuff. If there's no trophy hunters, hundreds and thousands more of these snares are gonna be set out there, be taken because there's nobody patrolling these areas. So what the green, Greenpeace and the lefties and all those guys are doing, they're actually more harmful to wildlife. That's a white buffalo. That's an old one in the street. Veteran hunters Steve LeBlanc and Bill Pipes are in South Africa seeking a massive cake buffalo, a beast so lethal it claims over 200 lives per year, making this steely-eyed monster the deadliest of the big five. The exhilaration that you get out of it, it's not like people going and seeing them in a zoo or someplace else, but when you're out there with those live animals and you know that if the situation arises, they could kill you. So far, that's one of, one of the best. I bet that's more than 42 years, maybe bigger. There's a lot of enthusiasm in being able to go and a lot of uh, satisfaction in being able to take a real trophy animal. Hunter Bill Pipes feels the pressure as his hunt grows short without a shot fired. So far. So we were hunting and uh, we saw a, a group of bachelor bulls and uh, we were coming up on it. All of a sudden, out of nowhere appears a group of old bulls, Dugga boys. And these are the old, bad, bad boys. And immediately, the uh, professional hunter and game scout said, yeah, that's an old bull, Bill. That's one you should take. We chased after him in hot pursuit, hoping we could get to him going through, dodging through bushes and brush and up and down. And we were afraid that he was going to get away. Our professional hunter had located the bull just off from the main group. Bill quickly turned glass and said to me, Steve, what do you think? All I could say, shoot! Shoot him, Bill! Shoot him! All of a sudden, we glass and in the real thick stuff on the river, some real thick brushy stuff, we caught a glimpse of one of his horns sticking out. And immediately, the uh, professional hunter and game scout said, yeah, that's an old bull, Bill. That's one you should take. So the shot was a little farther than I would have liked, but I had Savage 375 shooting uh, federal premium ammunition. And uh, with the experience that I've had by hunting in Africa and all, I felt I could make the shot. As soon as he cleared, we got out. Bill, get ready, get ready. We've got to shoot this bull. You've got to do him. The Cape Buffalo's kill zone resides behind a massive front shoulder plate protecting the vital organs. A bad shot quickly produces a deadly situation, and only a perfect brain shot can deliver a life saving takedown. And it was a little further than we normally like to shoot. This was reaching out there at about 100, 100, about 125, 150 yards. I felt I had the crosshairs on him, that it was a clear shot. You never want to shoot through brush, because that can deflect a bullet. First shot hit that buffalo great. And you know, when you shoot those bulls, they kind of hunker up, and then all of a sudden, they get a little shot of adrenaline. And off he goes. And I made a good hit on him, and uh, he moved off out of the riverbed up onto the side of the hill there. So we all kind of spread out, looked for blood and sign, and watched and tracked up there. And he was hit good because he didn't go very far. We saw him standing uh, sickly with his head down. Congratulations. Sorry, sorry, sorry. <laughs> yeah, that's well worth the effort. Yeah, thank you. Well worth the effort. So I felt those premium 375 solids did a great job and uh, was very, very happy. I walked up to him and a beautiful bull. 
Hey, look at the bosses on the crap. You got some bosses. Yeah, lungs Woo! coming out. <laughs> well done. Yeah. Well done. And this is what I really wanted. I mean, here was the bowl over 40 inches on his spread. I mean, I was so excited and so thrilled to be able to take an animal like that. This is what he'd come to Africa for. There was a 41 inch buffalo. Bill was excited and he better be excited and he needed to be excited because this is what he's always wanted. Yes, and he does. His dad got everything I wanted, you know, tips down, goes back, good faces. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I mean, it's just a wave of relief when you can finally say, hey, I've got him, it's there. The feeling and the relaxation that you have after that is hard to explain. Great buffalo, shooting the 375, and uh, did a great job on him, and I'm really, really happy with this buffalo. With their trophies in the salt and their hunt, now in the history books, Steve, Bill, and the crew revel in their success by celebrating the memories they've created the prosperity they have shared, and the contributions they have made to managing the game animals they respect and admire so deeply.